What's up, Stokers? Before we begin this podcast, I want to let you know that we have our show on Netflix, Chad and JT Go Deep, coming out August 23rd. You can search the show right now on Netflix. You can add it to your favorites so you can get ready and get notified right when it drops. So you can watch day of, and it also helps us with the algorithm so it can get circled around and we can bring the Stoke nationwide. So check that out. Can't wait for you guys to see it. I know you're going to love it. Uh, we also are going on tour. We got dates coming up. We're hitting North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh, we got Boston date that just dropped in November, Hawaii, Honolulu, uh, New York, Nashville, Chicago. Get your tickets at chatandjt.com. We're also brought to you by the legends at Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pew, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dinks are looking fresh and clean because does your happy trail look like a happy highway? Does your bush peek out over your fence. If you had to even think about the answers, you need the revolutionary products from Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code GODEEP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code GODEEP. What up? We're also brought to you by the Legends at Athletic Greens. Dude, is my favorite all-in-one nutrition package, Athletic Greens. Hey, make sure that you get your vitality in the morning. And the best way to do that is to put some Athletic Greens in your drink then you get all the vitamins you need, all the vitamins you need in just one scoop. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Visit athleticgreens.com slash go deep for a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. That's athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Finally, we are brought to you by the legends at ShipStation. What up, dudes? If you're in a business, if you're looking to you know, ship stuff and make it easy and super affordable and just not even a headache at all, check out Ship Ship, ship Station because Ship Station isn't magic, but it'll make your shipping stress disappear. Sign up using promo code GODEEP for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com. Start breathing easier with every shipment. That's two whole months of stress-free shipping and it's try, it's free to try. So just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in Go Deep. Ship station, make ship happen. All right, let's start the show. Show me the curve in your feet, and let's get hot dog on a stick. What's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger. <laughs> The Go and David Chad JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers. We're here with the um, with the uh, the T with the T Dartosaurus. Let's go, Strider Wilson. Fired up on that. And Excellent we have, moniker. We have two more guests: the Big Hog, Joe, what? and his cock. Guys, it's great to be here. Yeah, man. It's good to have you back. It's brother. awesome to be back. It's been like a um, year since we did one of these. Well, all four of us? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, maybe. Yeah, it's four horsemen. But I've done two with you guys. Right. We did since, one live yeah. in Austin, and we did one a uh, couple months ago here. But yeah, the four of us, yeah, this is nice. That's why I'm uh, drinking a Pacifico. Beautiful to see. Uh, Cheers. It's good beer. Oh, it's beautiful to see. Both just drinking Mexican lager. That was a great sound, too. That was a great clank. Yeah, it was clean. Great start. Yeah, we're no strangers to uh, clinking beers. That's right. I'm a big, big cheers guy. <laughs> I you cheers know, every time. Yeah. I like to talk a little bit, and then there will be a natural kind of moment, you know? like a rising kind of energy to the conversation. Everyone kind of laughs. And then you look around the table, you go, now's the moment. You go, hey, guys, put them up. Cheers. That's right. It's very nice. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so we got a long too. day and night so ahead sick. of us, so we better... Uh, yeah, we're doing the pod. We better pace it. But Then we're, then we're going to work out. Yep. We're gonna get oh, you two are working out. Yeah, I'm going to make sure. No, I'm not working me. out. Yeah, he's going to work out with me. No, I showered already. That's it. No, I think, I think we're going to throw some dumbbells around. <laughs> Once I shower, I have, I try to avoid sweat. Joe, you're looking trim, though. Yeah, you Thank, look great. Yeah, I, yeah, I look great. I, yeah, Congratulations. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is because I don't eat well. I think it's... Uh, but you're walking everywhere. Yeah, right? I walk everywhere. 
I do a lot of accidental rocking. What's work? You know what's what rocking working? is? Where you uh, like carry a bag that's heavy. Yeah, like you, yeah. You move. Basically, like walking with weights. Right, right. Like a rucksack. Like if you have, a, if you have like mm-hmm. a weighted backpack, mm-hmm. like it burns like three times the calories of just regular walking. Right. But I do it like with groceries mm-hmm. and nice. like stuff in my backpack. What kind of groceries are we talking about? I mean, we're talking bananas, almond milk. Uh, this is heavy stuff. Peanut butter. That's dense. Yeah, yeah it's all dense. And and to the bad diet thing, I think a lot of it. I'll my weight's pretty low right now, and I haven't been eating well. But when you eat bad things, they keep you full for longer. Like I had like for dinner last night, I just had a cup of chocolate mousse. Whoa! But nice. I didn't eat anything else. <laughs> but that's like three hundred calories. Right. If you eat like a sandwich with like a a side of vegetables and then like a starch, that's yeah. like a thousand. And I will eat like I do eat vegetables every day at some point. I do have healthy stuff, but. On the whole, I, I I don't think I'm eating healthy, but I'm in the best shape I've been in in years. Your, your portions are low, though, right? Yeah, I do low portions, um, and then I don't like I don't snack. Yeah, really. Are there any vegetables that upset you? No, at, at this age now, I pretty much like all of them. But do you ever just like look at broccoli and you're like, "Fuck that"? No. I love it. What about a cucumber? Do you look at it and go, my penis is like three of you? <laughs> and I don't like... I, yeah, go on. <laughs> huge cocks. No, I don't like... Uh, <laughs> Whoa. What? I don't like the way cucumbers taste. You know, I like them in a salad. I, I yeah. Don't. You put, like that texture? Yeah. But I, like on its own. I, I, yeah, Have you ever yeah. put salt on one? No. no. Try it. That's no, a very adult. It's a very I'm adult. Gonna do it. To it's, have. A, it's a delicacy. It's very good. I like you bullying me into, into eating cucumbers. I do like. That. Also, Ju- to your theory, it will fill you up, low calories, and hydrate you. Yeah, yeah. they're very refreshing. I, people say that. People say like you'll be more full if you eat healthy. I have not found that to be the case when I eat. I don't even think like all healthy. I'm just saying that's a filling ass food. Cucumbers? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's big. It's a fucking big ass thing. Oh, if you I, eat a whole one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you eat know, a whole yeah, if you I eat a whole, whole right. cucumber. When I oh, order a sushi rolls, I don't trust I anyone doing that. Cucumber. Yeah, I think it's a nuisance. I do too. You don't, like, you don't even like it in the sushi? A, yeah, it's I mean, a now we're getting crazy nuisance, here. Joe. You know, it's a texture thing. It's the crunch. I'll, let, I'll show you what it is. I don't need the crunch. I'll let you taste the flavorless Hey, it's your it's your roll. Enjoy it how you enjoy it. Wait, Joe, okay. Big cue for you. Yeah, Brussels sprouts with bacon and uh, you know some like balsamic on them. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, roasted, roasted yeah. appetizer or side. And mind you, remember the bacon and the balsamic. Someone actually asked me about you saying or picking Brussels sprouts as an appetizer on my podcast. Like what I thought about it. Oh whoa! And I thought it was ridiculous. Whoa. Yes, ridiculously cool. No, I thought oh. Brussels sprouts are. Totally just a side dish. But, but now thing. throwing in, I didn't hear the bacon. That's what I'm saying. And the balsamic. Okay, now, you, now you're in the club. Thank you. That's no how you, you brought the ladies with no, you. No, it's Thank not. You. Now you're in. Now you Thank have entry. You. It's Thank still you. a side. There are a lot it's of menus. A it's, listed as a, it, it's listed as an app on a lot of menus. That's just, do they have sides on those menus or do they just have appetizers? Right below it's wings. Right above no, but that what, is no, avocado. No, but what I'm saying is on dip. those menus. Oh, do they also have other things? Do they have sides as an as a category? Some of them probably. What's the place you it's referenced? Apps, it's Cheesecake Factory. No, it's the like, first one when we did the draft. Oh, Laurel Tavern. Yeah, it's yeah. on there as an app. Oh, but do is. they have All a right. sides category as well? I don't know that question. Let me look it up. You can check it out. I, th- I, I do, mean, that, I do think that really a- doesn't matter to me because French fries are a side well, or an app. Like well, It's the, the same thing. Well, I think it does matter if they don't have extra categories. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, French fries is the same thing. Here's the thing. Everyone was dogging you because it just said Brussels sprouts. But for me, I'm like, it's all in the preparation. Amen, if it's brother. Brussels sprouts with bacon and balsamic on there. Yeah, I that's mean, different. Yeah, that's, that's I, I, that. I thought it was just straight up. They don't have Brussels a sides sprouts. category. Cool. Yeah, that place is rips. Dude. Well, it could Fucking be under a rips. different name. <laughs> but, but, but when you were making that. You, no, all I said was the, all I said was they had an appetizer that's a Brussels sprouts, and I referenced those right. Ones, which but, have the balsamic. But if they bacon. had a sides category as well, they I might mean, move the Brussels sprouts. Now we're in a there. hypothetical. I mean, you know, I don't know. What, well, yeah, because what I, atmosphere are we in? It's not under Star well, no, atmosphere, and I, I no, really couldn't tell. Because I do think that <laughs> it's more of a look. I got to call my lawyer. It's if you're going to ask me that question, I got to call my lawyer. Kevin? Well, look, yeah, I got to call the schmoll. Yeah, call if, I got to call the schmoll. If my options are shared salad sandwiches and burgers. 
and sweet tooth. Yeah, I'll put Brussels sprouts in the shared. But if there was a side category, I think it would go there. I, here's my. Sick. I don't think. I don't think you'd get Brussels sprouts as a side with bacon and balsamic. I've never heard of that. Oh, it's so bomb. No, as a as a side. Oh, yeah, as a side. It doesn't yeah, seem like no, it's, I would, yeah, I don't you think would it get goes like with a, a steamed dish. Brussels sprout as a side. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it goes it's with the a same dish. thing as French fries. You would get cheese fries as an app. You wouldn't get cheese fries as a side. It's yeah. the exact same thing. That's all I'm saying. But look, Chris won. I'm happy to move and on. And then at Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> at, <laughs> at, cheese, <laughs> at Cheesecake Factory, they put everything. <laughs> That's what I was saying. Greg made that point. Small plate snacks and appetizers. Yes, yeah. He, uh, he he came back at me with that. Yeah. Look, but, baby, it's an app. But yeah, I'm. I'm at, or is it I'm a snack board. or a small plate? We don't know. I mean, <laughs> those Brussels sprouts you explain are wings are on that app. same menu. I mean, by that rationale, wings might be a snack or a small plate. We don't know. Oh, right. I think Joe's the ultimate judge. Joe yeah. is the abdicator, or not the abdicator. What is it called? The guy who fucking makes decisions. Those the adjudicator. Bru- adjudicator. The Brussels sprouts. See, I'm big on words. They appetizer. matter. The rewards do matter. I hear you. Joe's the Joe's Wait. the voice of God when it comes to food, beer, and men. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. A fucking man. Dude. And that one. Yeah, I'll say that's an appetizer. I appreciate it. With the bacon and the balsamic. Maybe it's, it's a, or maybe it means snack. Small plate. So do you have any any love interests in your life? Anyone you're me? Yeah. No, no. Um, I haven't had time to focus on that lately. Right. Yeah. I just I've been doing uh, some personal stuff. Nice. We have that lady in the comments. I do. Yeah. Whoa, I have like a secret this? admirer that like writes in and like who she sent me a picture. Just a woman that listens to the podcast and. Yeah, it's kind of like she'll like hint at like she'll be like, hey, like she asked me like, hey, what dirty talking do you like to do? And like, uh, what do you, what what do you want your like things? What are you interested in a partner? And then she'll like do like wink, wink, like, ooh, maybe it could be me, kind of a thing. Like, so yeah, I'm, I'm into that. Maybe, maybe do you we'll talk meet. back to her? Yeah, I actually did like respond physically to the email like all the emails i'll respond to on the podcast but her i actually wrote one back and i that was the first time i did that what'd you say well she said she was she's like i'm going on a date are you jealous and i said yeah i am oh nice i like you being honest about it yeah i was jealous mm. who was the date with did she describe the guy no i don't want i don't want to know about the guy yeah, I think she, yeah, because she said she's into younger guys. Um, yeah, because she's like new to the dating scene. She's like recently divorced. So she's trying to get out there and she's into guys like me, which is uh, like a lot of women. Uh, <laughs> it's not hard to see why. I agree. Yeah. So, Fuck but yeah, no, no love interests at the moment. Nice. That's probably good. It's not good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, people it's will tell you. It's probably good. Like, this guy's got a girlfriend hanging out in the in the room over there. Oh yeah, it's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is true. It's funny, like like wellness philosophy will tell you, like, hey, you have to be okay by yourself. No, but, you don't. I've talked about this many times. That's bullshit. But sorry, go ahead. No, I think you're right. It is life is better when you have a companion. Yeah, it's like, yeah. come on. What are you talking about? You need someone to bounce things off of. Yeah, things come alive more. Yeah. I mean, you just can't be like, oh, does this shirt look good? You're just looking at yourself. You, know, you want to ask somebody. Do you talk out loud? I do that a lot, though. I talk out loud to myself when I'm wearing stuff. Um, I usually don't. I don't talk to myself out loud. Maybe I should. Maybe that's better. I don't know. I don't know. My dad used to mutter a lot to himself. He'd just be driving. He'd be like, cocksucking motherfucker. Why the fuck did you do that? <laughs> Piece of shit. So himself, about himself? No, he'd be talking to somebody else, like some guy he was pissed at. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. And then I'd be like, dad, what happened? And he'd tell me some gnarly story that I shouldn't have heard. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, be like, he'd be like, I got into a fight at a bar. This guy fucking stepped to me because of this shit. I was like, that's fucked up, man. Yeah. And then uh, he'd just be muttering about it. 
But I do that too. I give myself like pump up speeches when I'm just hanging out. Yeah, that's good. It sounds like a positive thing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's energy. It's good. Nice. Stoked your back, dude. It's good to have you back in the room, baby. Yeah, I got to tell you, like when I visited here in May, I was kind of like, uh, feels weird to be back. But then I was, uh, my friend Kelly picked me up from the airport and as, as I was like driving back and then getting back into the neighborhood over here, I was like, feels great to be here. Uh, just feeling all kinds of uh, nostalgic feelings. Uh, went to Erewhon, went to the park and I was like, wow, this feel great being here right now you love being back yeah yeah it feels nice well we miss you yeah i mean i would like to get back like a lot it would be cool to come here like once a month right you could come back full time i could yeah there's always the option yeah yeah i don't nothing's permanent i'm not you know i don't know yeah do you picture yourself as like an old person in Austin. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I doubt it. But I don't really picture myself as an old person in Los Angeles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah th- I mean, that's also true. Like I don't walking know. Walking on Melrose when I'm like 65. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Through like pop up shops. I think that's like more of a Newport kind of a thing. Kids with like crazy haircuts and like new races I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you want to be strolling down Melrose at 65. Melrose is on the cutting edge of like everything. Like oh, yeah. Haircut, complexion, shoes, stuff I've never seen before. Yeah, we'll be, well, yeah, we'll be, we'll be on Melrose later. So we'll see. Would you have sex with an alien? <laughs> um, man, what, like, what do they look like though? You'd be not like one of the green ones. Yeah, it's hot. You, she's hot, but she's green. Like and the Independence Day ones with the, bah, you know, I'm not going to do one of those. It could have good suction, though. Suction of what? Your cock. Bullshit. <laughs> they won't. They don't. Do you think those aliens know how to handle a hog? Dude, There's no dude, way. You they're, they're, they're not all slimy. They're you not know trained they, for that. Dude, you see how slimy <laughs> they are? You'd have sex with an alien, right? Fuck yeah. But I think yeah. Joe would be the one that our world would send because you're representative of our, of our dicks. It would be our yeah. strongest, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would they, you say they look like what, though? If they're hot, but they're green. Yeah, then yeah. Well, yeah, well, hot and green. It's, I have no problem with that. Would you dirty talk an alien? Like, yeah, take that, you ET fuck. I'd be like, yeah, this is this is what the Earth <laughs> Earth is about. <laughs> <laughs> take some take some Earth hog in you. <laughs> take take that back to your galaxy. Because we could have a ceremony where it's like we're creating a hybrid of their species and ours. You know, it's like Joe and an alien, and so. Yeah, they can model the hog for their uh, species. Yeah, it'd be like a green alien with a huge dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into that. Do you think aliens, do you think their cultures are consumerist? Do you think that's right? <laughs> it's tough to say because we can only view it through the lens of our human experience and we're very consumerists right gimme 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 they might be totally different who knows they might dude our brain might not be able to comprehend what they look like all of our alien movies what are they they like use resources and move on they're like the evil that man commits like the aliens in independence day but they might be into some crazy shit we don't even know about they might be beyond consuming yeah you know yeah they could be in another dimension Exactly. They could be here right now, but our brains can't see it. Yeah. Right. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So that's that's pretty wild. I mean, yeah. So it's tough. We have to anthropomorphize, but fucking, I don't know. I hope they're benevolent, dude. If they are in this dimension, hypothetically, they'd be made of the same elements as us, right? Carbon. Carbon is are we carbon based? Yeah, all life giving all life forms are have carbon in them. That's so if, what, they, if they're carbon based, they probably would be pretty similar. Yeah, like there was some. a theory one time that I heard on this podcast, Little Adams, that a, evolution moves in a direction. Yeah. So like, actually, when we went to see alien planets, we'd be yeah. startled by how similar they were to us. Dude, if they were just look just like us, that'd be hilarious. Be but, so gnarly. Yeah, that would be cool. But then, if the climate of their 
of their home was different. I imagine that there would be different right. things that would be emphasized. Yeah, you know? I just wanted. Do they need to be in like the Goldilocks zone? Because we're in like the Goldilocks zone where the temperature's just right. So does all life need to be in that? Yeah, does all life need Goldilocks? It's like the close enough to a sun with water. That's like where Earth is. Not like around the, a star. The girl from the no, same thing. But it's the idea just, extrapolated yeah. to a uh, you know life. The no, middle cosmos. porridge. Mm -hmm. Which is fucking sick, dude. That was a great of what was your favorite childhood parable story? What's yours? Uh, That's a good question. I like I it's not a parable, but I like Ricky Tiki Tavi. I remember I like I that name, that but I one. forget that story. Yeah. It's the mongoose. He kills cobras. That's badass. In that name, I know I, that's a great name. Or what's your favorite tall what's your favorite tall tale? Oh, Pecos Pete was always cool. Pecos, Pecos Bill. Bill, yeah. <laughs> What, what yeah, are you, what yeah. Are you, you guys about? never heard of Pecos Beat though? Yeah. Tall about? tales like John Pecos Henry, Pete's Paul Bunyan. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I like Paul Bunyan. Paul, Paul Bunyan, Bunyan, I guess. Did you what? read those? No. Johnny Appleseed. You was didn't read cool. Tall Tales. John Smith. No. None of them. Or no? So. What's Maybe that's awesome. I also don't remember. My yeah, childhood. you don't remember childhood. No, I don't remember anything. Dude, they're pretty fun. It's like these larger than life Western characters. I reset every morning. Davy Crockett's great, but he was real, wasn't Davy Crockett real? He's the one who died at the Alamo. And he wore. The, he was the first guy to wear the raccoon hat. That's yeah. Cool. It's pretty bad. Oh yeah, that guy's beast. Oh, Davy Crockett. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've worn one of those hats. He was so cool. He started wearing that hat, and people yeah. weren't like cool hat. They yeah, were like, dude. They were <laughs> yeah. like, "That's fucking sick." <laughs> he shows up. That's how you know that you're the man, dude. Dude, he just puts on that hat, and he's just with chicks. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, "I need to get a, a freaking raccoon skin hat." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But Paul Bunyan was sick. He's the one who created the Great Lakes with his footsteps because he was so big and housed flapjacks. And the Grand Canyon too, right? Dragging his axe. It cut a hole. Yeah. New Mexico. Uh, no, I don't think I've heard these stories. They're pretty fun. That's dude. pretty wild. Yeah. I remember. And the Tom Sawyer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a thing. Yeah, Tom Sawyer, <laughs> dude. Um, yeah, well, no, I don't think I've ever heard those. Blue Ox. I know the Bernstein yeah, Bears. Yeah, Babe. Who were they? Babe, yeah. There's... A bunch of bears. Speaking um, of dimensions, of bears. It's pretty. They're pretty endearing. You know the you know the theory on the Berenstein Bears with dimensions, right? No, because it's actually Aaron. Do you know about this? It's actually like Barnstein Bears. Right. Yes. Right. But everyone says it wrong, so there's a theory that like I don't know how it goes, but like that it's a, in another dimension. People say it that way. Yeah. It's like crossed over to ours. Yeah. But it's probably just some other bullshit. Why yeah. do they call it the Mandela effect? Because people, when he got out of prison, people thought he'd been dead for years. Oh. But it was just a public conscience. Nelson Mandela, pretty cool oh, dude. Wow. Pretty cool yeah. guy. Absolutely. A lot of respect. Nelson Mandela, yeah. Solid dude. Dudes who go to prison then better themselves, impressive. Yeah. Look at Cameron Poe. Departed. Exactly. If you could have dinner with Cameron one, Poe. Thank you. yeah, Cameron. Sorry, yeah, so. Cameron Poe is a huge prison Big political time. prisoner. Big yeah. time. Nice. So, he he lived a good prison life too. The best, bro. He like reads philosophy and gets jacked. And became really good buddies with his buddy. Does origami, dude. Yeah. <laughs> with Baby O. I got to rewatch that. So fucking good, dude. What were you saying? I was gonna say if you could have dinner with one politician, past or present, who would it be? Oh, good question. Ooh. I'll just keep lobbing. This is. I did a podcast today. This is just fresh on my mind, but maybe Aristotle, more of a philosopher, but mm. also. Oh, that'd be cool. He says man is a political animal. Poly meaning city. So we're and you guys were talking about this. We're meant to live in a city with people. So man, the perfected man is the highest form of creature, but the perfected man is cooperating and communicating with other. And he uses the nature argument where he's like, we have speech. And, you know, we've obviously learned this now, like whales have dialects, all that shit, but this is before all that. But he's like, the fact that we have speech and com can communicate means we are cooperative, mm -hmm. means man should be with each other, communicating, interacting. An isolated man is a dangerous, bad thing, and that can be the downfall of democracies. And that's like the sapiens argument, too, that what made us the most prominent species on the planet, at least according to us, is that we have the ability to believe in and cooperate around abstract ideas correct you could you can get someone to crash into a building with an airplane and promise them something in the afterlife you can't get any other creature to do that no i don't care how many It'd bananas cool you, you promise could, someone if you could convince yeah. dogs to be terrorists would be hey we can convince them to be soldiers which <laughs> yeah. is badass if i had just like a thousand dogs golden retrievers sold. at my disposal and i was like hijack that plane and who do i hate 
Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, I right. hate gold. I hate yellow labs. We're yeah, gonna go bomb like, dude, yellow labs, <laughs> dude. Gold retrievers hijacking a plane. I'd be like, this is what? awesome. And then they <laughs> fuck you over. That yeah. that would be world. They all shave their heads for some reason. Oh, dude. yeah. They have just a line in their head. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. And you're like, oh. I think I would have either Marcus Aurelius. That's sick. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, You'd also have I a was going to go meal. for a jokey one, but no, I don't want to. What was your jokey one? Dude? Jesse Ventura. Nice. No, that'd be really fun. That'd be cool. He's a yeah. wrestler. He was in Predator. Dude, his voice is amazing. Yeah. What do you dude. think about the set of Tower 7? Think about it, okay? <laughs> think about it. What was going on? <laughs> that's, it's got that's a little Vincent D'Onofrio in it, dude, too. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I think he's entertaining. Would you have Joe? I don't know. What about like Julius Caesar? Oh, dude. Oh, it's a great one, dude. Did they have bad manners? Did they have similar dinner manners? All these old timers? It's a good question. Did they have utensils? Like, Probably I had f- bad breath. Fat, yeah, I don't know right? the Romans. I have bad breath. No, you've got great breath. No, bad I have breath. bad breath. My really? girlfriend sent me a dentist contact. Whoa. Oh, have you ever heard of a toothbrush? I brush my teeth. I think it's just from Some wearing people have that. I yeah. just got to take care of it. Dude, you know, tan. I was actually thinking about this. The vape. No, not We're the baby. Uh, got a Toyota you, Camry in his mouth. Mouth breathing is what gives you bad breath. I think that I, I got something going on. I mean, yeah. she loves me despite it, but I got to get my teeth cleaned. Well, maybe it's the vapes. I think it's a yeah. I think it's probably the vape too. But yeah, she just sent me a contact and said, "Hey, hit this up before you leave town." I was like, "Damn, bro." Yeah, I'm on it. You know, and my- then, but then I kept asking her. I kept going, "Do I have bad breath?" And she was like, no, no, you don't have bad breath. And I was like, all right, well, you're like sending me dentist info. But then yesterday she's been sick. So, and it wasn't even that bad, but I kissed her. I was like, you got bad breath. And she got mad and she goes, you have bad breath. I was like, I knew it. Oh, hilarious. Dude, I hilarious. Knew it. Dude. I knew it. There's not going to be any more yeah. kissy face. And then I went, and then I, <laughs> dude, she said the funniest, <laughs> she said the funniest thing. I go, why, why didn't you tell me I had bad breath? And she looks, she goes, it's something just all women have to accept. Oh, what? amazing. Oh, like dudes, all dudes have bad yeah. breath. Bullshit. Whoa. Most people said. don't have bad breath. But if someone was going to have bad breath, it's probably dudes. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Well, mostly guys. Because we're eating butt yeah. all day. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like you guys come over, we eat each other's asses for a couple hours. Yes, we make some yeah, steaks and we head out. It's yeah, it's smell. no big deal, but Most. it catches up to you. Yeah. That's I a love, great call. You I know, my dad cast fiance, I told her when I was in college that I didn't go to the dentist for seven years. That's disgusting. And she like made a dental appointment for me. And she's like, go. Yeah. She's like, I'll pay for it. She's like, I have to kiss your mouth. And I went, no cavities. Dude. I never have cavities though. I have bad breath and I don't floss that much. I never get cavities. That's good. I used to get, I had tons of cavities as a kid. I have soft teeth. So I had yeah, probably know. like 20. I've, I've What's soft teeth? Like, are they literally softer to the touch? I don't know. I, either that's a thing or they're basically just like, you eat way too much candy, but yeah. we're going to call it soft teeth. Cause I ate a shitload of candy and would just wake up and drink Coca-Cola. That was oh, my whole yeah. diet as a kid. I yeah. ate Skittles all day and I felt dude, amazing. Dude, yeah, I was eating fudgesicles. Shit, put them in my butt too. I wasn't no cavities a, oh, up there either. Let's go. Oh, fudgesicles. I, yeah. love, oh, I oh. forgot about those. Yeah. You're big on Choco Tacos right now. I don't know if you want to bring it back up, but sorry. <laughs> Is that a real thing that Choco Taco's gone? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah that was people my- People are saying it's a, it's a marketing scheme. But. Oh, to like draw a demand? Yeah, that That's was smart. that was my go-to at the ice cream truck as a kid. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, Unbelievable. Summer camp. My go-to is just hanging out with Phil in the back. Nothing dude, no. nothing weird. What are you just, doing in the back of the ice cream truck? That sounds- He would just tell me about his life. He's like, yeah, my brother, you know, yeah, he was I, a cop, yeah. but I had been in the military. He tried to fight me when I came back, and I told him, look, man, I fight to the death. Mm. Like cool anecdotes He's one of like the, that. Yeah. And you were like 10. He was what, like maybe 35, 40? Yeah, Probably, like 40. yeah. Mm. That's pretty cool. Did he- <laughs> no, but like we were legit <laughs> friends. Like we had a good relationship. She would just talk to me about stuff. It was nice. Did he teach you any moves? Because you were always a good fighter early on. Like Deez, you could fight Deez. well. Mm. I got beat up a couple times, but thank you. But you got in the ring. You always got back in the ring too. You were a pretty good fighter when you took down. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Did you guys get in a legit fight? Do. That was a, yeah. Our boy was coming in hot and. I had transgressed. It was my fault. I'm going to blank out his name, though. Let's blank out his name. My yeah. boy. I thought it would be funny because he had a huge cock like Joe, not as big. And I was like, everyone needs oh, to thanks. see this. This is he, He's hiding this gift from the world. People need to see this. Mm. So then I pantsed him. Mm. Oh, man. And I'm like, that's inappropriate. I can't pull down someone's pants and expose them. And then he got pissed off, rightfully so. And then, But he did let it swelter. And like 25 minutes later, Literally, dude, I'm just hanging out. He comes charging at me. Oh, 
And then <clears throat> I just kind of had to put him down. I wasn't going to fight yeah. him. I was like, dude, fuck. Like, no, you stop. were like, calm down. Calm down. Yeah. Because yeah. we're boys. And, I, and yeah. I knew I fucked up. And then JT came over and like separated and like calmed. Dude, there was yeah. also that time where that old guy choked me out. Dude, that was the best thing of all what? time, dude. There was this, I'm it was amazing. There was, we were at a party and there was this old guy who kept arm wrestling all the teenagers. And he was being way too aggro. It was like a after party for a uh, like a youth football team. And I was like 20 or something. And I just, he kept being After macho. Party. So I kept smacking his ass. And then this old guy goes, you smack my ass one more time <laughs> and I will fuck you up. He's and like a dad in a he suit. He was a dad. His kid was there. And I'm like, okay, dude. Okay, dude. Turns around and I smack his ass again. <laughs> then he flips back and he's got like a fucking bear claw. Yeah. Puts it around my neck and starts choking me. Oh, whoa. And I start laughing, but then he starts to really apply pressure. And I start to, the air's leaving and I'm starting to go out. And uh, everyone, yeah, dude, that yeah. Intense? yeah, and everyone was just watching. Like my brother and Strider were there, but they didn't. Because no one knew. No one knew what to do. Like a dad right. was choking out a kid. Yeah, and then, and he kept going. And then, thank God, my friend Emily, yeah. whose house it was, was like, "Stop!" And she put her arms around the guy, and the guy, not knowing it was her, f threw his arm up, Ooh. and she went flying over a table. Whoa! And then every dude shoots, and up. then every dude just ran in. Yeah, wow! And like grabbed the dad. And he, he was so funny. They had the dad and, you know, they had his arms hooked and he was just staring at me screaming <laughs> really? in front of all these parents and kids. He's like, he grabbed my ass. Oh, he God. grabbed my yeah. ass. Oh, yeah, and yeah. then it was amazing. That's dude. amazing. That's insane. It was and then nuts. They, and then they made him leave. And then we got kicked out. <laughs> yeah. Grab my ass. We should have been wow. kicked out for sure. But like. He, this guy definitely should have been kicked out. It was so funny, dude. Was that guy drinking too? He was yeah, drinking. he was hammered. He was, he was up. Yeah. He had like that, like where you can feel someone's like alcohol, like every time they breathe. Like red like, face. <sighs> that yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. scotch and steak face. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, it was like coming out of his pores. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, he choked me good. He had a fucking mon. I couldn't get his hand. Dude, it, it was a powerful grip, but I remember- Cause it snuck up because it was so hilarious, <laughs> and you kept stopping us. <laughs> that JT was choking but laughing. He's like, because <laughs> it was, and we're like, oh, this must be funny. Yeah. But yeah, Emily picked up on it first, where she was like, this is actually serious. Yeah. And he then there was like some football ass. players there, like USC football players there. So like that dad would have t got his ass kicked. Like right. it would have taken six like dudes. five of them. Yeah, five or six. It was going to take all of them. He was buff, like, dude. Crazy. He was a strong dad. He was built like uh, like that like a suitcase. And he had energy. He yeah, had he had an anger sir. to him. Yeah, he was upset. <laughs> Can you imagine Slapping coming home ass. after that to your like wife? How's your day? <laughs> Going to bed. He grabbed my ass, so I choked him out. Bro, was so funny, dude. He yeah, grabbed he was, my dude, ass. He just kept slapping this guy's ass. Yeah, he just kept touching his butt. There is something so funny about doing that, dude. Dude, <laughs> what? was it a hard ass? <laughs> Yeah, you also did like a little tickle model. at one point. Like, <laughs> you're like, dude, that's a great point. You're like, great, I forget his name. He's like, great point, Roger. No, <laughs> I, I was being like stupid. I wasn't like smacking. I just kept like touching. Oh, well, yeah, that is annoying. It was, yeah. It was like if you're it. smacking it, it's like, all right, that's, yeah, let's go. It's like kind of sporty. But when you're doing that, it's like weirdly sexual. And he was probably like, <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I'll choke you out. I'll grab your ass, Joe. Oh, man. Yeah, please do. Would you guys bone a robot? No. Really? Yes, I've yeah. seen weird science. Oh, she's a robot in that? Yeah. She might be the most beautiful woman. What was her name? Brock? Right? There's a robot. Kelly LeBron. Right? She's a robot, right? She's a computer program. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Dude. yeah, it was a fake. Uh, yeah, Kelly LeBrock. Yeah, Dude, I totally wanted to pork the Fembots and Austin Powers. Oh, they yeah. were super hot. Yeah, yeah, bro. That song's so good too. Yeah. When I think mm -hmm. about you, I touch, touch myself. Oh, I don't want anybody else. When, when I think, think about you, I touch myself. And then they're like, Whoa. Whoa. You know who Kelly LeBrock was married to? Shoot. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Do you guys know? Macho Jesse Man. the Bon Ventura. I'll give you. He's an action movie star. Jean Claude. You're almost there. Oh. Uh, a lot of a lot of open hand strikes. Chuck Norris. No. Dolph Lundgren. No. Jet Lee. Runs like a girl. No. Big, big dude. Ponytail. Uh, Steven Seagal. Triple H. Yeah. Whoa. Steven oh, wow. Seagal. Nice. Good for him. Dude, when I brought up his car at Valet one time, I think I've talked about this before. He just goes, hey, let me see. <laughs> and I was like, "What are you saying?" Like, 
know what I'm saying. <laughs> I was like, bro, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> what car do you have? <laughs> it was unreal, <laughs> bro. How, how do you look Stranger. in person? Dude, a little bit bloated, a little bit of that scotch and stick yeah, energy. Bloated. Yeah. Still you got know, that ponytail. A sheen to him. Still had the ponytail. Nice. Tail. How long ago was this? This is like a couple years, five years now, maybe. Is he big? He's a big boy. He's tall. And right? a little bit of weight to him. Yeah, he's got some heft. Right. And didn't he just get famous for being like someone's personal trainer? Michael Ovitz, the guy who started CAA, he was his Aikido instructor. And Ovitz was so powerful in the early 80s. And, you know, Steven Seagal probably, he's got some charisma to him in his own weird way. Ovitz was like feeling himself so much. He's like, I can make a movie star out of this guy. Great call. And then made it happen. I was going to ask you guys this. This just made me think of it. The lotto is at like a billion dollars now. Oh, yeah. Jack sent us an article what? about this. Yeah. I think that if... I won the lotto. I would still want to kick with my boys, but I'd probably hire a bunch of expert dudes to like, I'd hire a judo trainer. I'd hire like a fucking chef to teach me like all these, like a dude to, I'd like, I'd like hire a, some guy to give me like the dad experience of like fixing up an old bike. Yeah, I would do all that your stuff. Time to like improvement in all these cool disciplines. It's kind yes, of like, that's, that's one of the do. coolest yeah. parts of the matrix mm. is that you can just plug that uh, tentacle into the back of your head and learn anything. They'll so just sick. inundate you with the knowledge of it. That would be, yeah. I'd probably do the same thing if I was a billionaire. I'd totally. just be like, give me all the knowledge. Because you'd have yeah. the time. Now your your time is whatever you want it to be. And then, yeah, why not fill it with these fucking rad things? And then, of course, boys trips. That, 100. Yeah. I, I had that same, like, I, I, I was looking up because I wanted to learn how to fix a tire. Yeah. And, like, change oil and, and just basic car shit. Now I mean, that you that got a, did your GF inspire you with that? Are you like, I need to be kind able to handle I, stuff? We had to jump her car and like I had to Google the shit and it was like kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I, like, I don't have to Google how to jump a car. Like, mm -hmm. you know. Dude, that's brave of you to say that on this platform, dude. Thanks, dude. I of course. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah but you got to look that up. You got to know what you're doing with those cables. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to attach just the wrong ones. You're trying to be sticking ones. things in any yeah. hole. Because I'm used to sticking things in holes. And, and, yeah, and, I mean, and, but you got to look at the hole first and inspect it. Or sometimes you just throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It also kind of makes sense. It's like, uh, I, it makes sense why like Jeff Bezos now wants to go to space yeah. because he's right. already experienced so much oh, of like yeah. the excitement and adrenaline that our terrestrial life has to offer that it it is like easy to make fun of, but also it makes very obvious sense to me that like you would chase that next. Like I'm surprised more entertainers don't just go into like the military or something just to find that like next larger fix of excitement. Yeah. Like the Tiger yeah. Woods, like doing the Navy SEAL thing was right. very much about his dad and stuff too, but also like the guy's experienced everything. Dude. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. What else? And you want to be in service of something bigger and something more exciting and like, well, where do you go from being like one of the top athletes? Yeah, in the but world? there's like, so much. Or maybe you play a game less boring than golf. But yeah, yeah but there's so much in this world. Do you think people experience this entire world that they need more? No, but they I think mean, you can't get around to all these continents and all these countries. You can't even get to all the restaurants in Los Angeles. True. But like, that, yeah, that's the cool thing about being an actor, too, is you, you can take on roles where you have to learn this shit about how to use guns. Yeah, and there's stuff cool. like that. It's like they it's basically like you can learn all these like Tom Cruise knows how to do so much shit. Fly helicopters, airplanes, guns, mm -hmm. motorcycles. He's in motorcycles, on a motorcycle, base jumping, skydiving, Fucking jets, jets. Yeah. You know, Benny and the jets. Yeah, it's cool. But I would definitely go to space. For sure. Yeah, when you do shrooms, that's where you, you go. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to space. Going oh, space. really? That's yeah. you should well, just, we were You at. should make a documentary about that and just like be you trying to go to space. Dude, I would totally do that. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would and people would watch that. I just think I just think it's so funny. There's just like billionaires with their white ass teeth, you know, just strapped in. <laughs> you know how your head shakes when you're just smiling like <laughs> And isn't it like ten minutes like you orbit like for like literally a little bit and then they yeah. bring you right back to so like oh Mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, like ten minutes to get there? No, I think like yeah. Come on, yeah. you're spamming a can, dude. Yeah, would you rather be in like a fighter jet experience that or go to space? I don't. I think the fighter jet would be too intense. I, I throw up. Yeah, yeah. Too nauseous. Yeah. Yeah, I throw up. Does it feel that intense on the spaceship as well, or is it a little? Smoother That's the thing. Of a I don't ride? know because you know, like Top Gun too. It's like the the experience of like the G force. Yeah, stuff. it's like I I assume it's got to be intense on a spaceship but i don't know if it's the same kind of feeling can you vape in space oh, that Dude, might be an excellent factor question. um 
They just came out and said they don't think there's ever been sex in space as far as oh, I know. Oh, man. I'd love well, to do that. Oh, that is – well, I mean, if you pop wood and someone climbs up to the tip of your wood, that's technically outer atmosphere. That's yeah. how fucking fat your hog is, dude. Dude. Does that's how happen. big yeah. your boner is, dude. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's my bro, Joe. He's got a big boner. Yeah, dude, Joe, I heard you're um, – when you're erect, it – creates precipitation like clouds form you yeah. know you know in like hawaii when the mountains are high enough yeah it is form around known them. to cause a bit of a marine layer if yeah. you will yeah i heard if you're lost in the wilderness and you get a boner compasses will make that the true north yeah. and, and people can get lost yeah that's the best use of the hog actually yeah, yeah. i'm so, glad to so much iron to help it. out help people find their way you know the egyptian pyramids are actually modeled after joe's hog yes yes did you guys see this thing that uh, there's a new article about SSRIs that say they don't help depression? Oh, what, really? Oh, Tom yeah. Cruise was right. Right. What right, are right. SSRIs? Oh, yeah. yeah I saw a, a clip about, about him like recently. Serotonin inhibitors. I don't know what the oh. actual breakdown is, but it's the standard. I think like Lexapro. Okay. The, the idea uh, that there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. Right. Or that they, they Huberman was saying, I, I'm piecing this up from not reading a single article, but I'm happy to dive into it on a public platform. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Huberman was saying that maybe they don't think it's actually uh, serotonin that's affecting mm. depression, that it might be another chemical component of the brain right but uh yeah it's pretty nice but i will say like i don't i don't know the heads or tails of any of it but my psychiatrist is hilarious because he's insanely well educated but i'll ask him i'll be he'll be like uh like in in periods of time where i've been hyper anxious or whatever i've been like maybe we need to try something else he's like yeah we can try lamictal which i don't think is an ssri but i'll be like let's and i'm like well will it work he's like we have no idea it's roll the dice yeah. he's like it's literally just you know trial and error like you right. just try different things and some things will work and we don't even know why they exactly work it just is based off your anecdotal experience of it yeah i mean i think you know in, in the tom cruise thing he talks about like uh add medication you're being glib matt yeah you're being yeah. glib he's like you don't know what ritalin is you don't even know what it is matt, yeah matt, i just yeah <laughs> matt that's amazing i, I literally matt, just saw that <laughs> clip <laughs> somebody <laughs> that was going around you know, instagram the yesterday. only part where that cruise yesterday. goes wrong yeah. Yeah. yeah is when he goes you don't understand this stuff i do right if he just would have left it at you don't understand yeah that would have been fine it's yeah. just when tom cruise goes i do understand that yeah. you're like all right tom like yeah. yeah like he sounded like he really knew what he was talking about he's a confident dude yeah i mean it's uh i i you know when i was prescribed adderall i when I started taking it, I was like, I don't think I should be on this shit, you know? No, it's bad for me. I have an addict yeah. brain, so I just started abusing it. And, so, and I got it from, like, some cheap lowbrow doctor who slung me pills for no reason. Yeah, me yeah. too. I mean, no, he's actually, he's a, he's a solid guy from Berkeley, so. No, my doctor was like, it was just like straight drug dealing. Oh, really? Yeah. What? I think, only, some... I, I think they only took cash. Really? That's that's amazing. Amazing. The doctor only took. This took yeah. place behind an ice yeah. cream truck as well. No, dude, it was it's, doctor. It's, it's, well, I don't want to say where it is in case someone goes in there, but it was like it was near. It was like next to a Whole Foods. I'll say that. Oh, that it's, seems it's, but it was a doctor's office. It's yeah. funny when the Tom Cruise thing came out because he's talking about vitamins, exercise, and at the time, I was like, <laughs> vitamins, <laughs> idiot. But now I'm like, yeah, you should get vitamins. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand any of that stuff, so I, I can't really speak on it. But. You've never been on anything, right? Nothing prescribed, but I take vitamins. I you take never did. multivitamins and stuff. I think they do. You feel a boost for sure. With multivitamins? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, caffeine's the only thing. Caffeine and alcohol are like stuff that I know that I feel. And shrooms, dude. Fucking legit, dude. Crazy. Well, yeah, that's like CBD. I can't do CBD because it's. I need something that's a little more perceptible. Like yeah. With CBD, I'm like... Although the stuff that Glassman gave me fucked me up. Right, yeah. That made me wonky as shit. Oh. But for the most part, I've never had a, f a reaction to it. Yeah. Do you try CBD? No, I never have. Yeah, I'm afraid to try, like, druggy stuff. Right. Yeah. I've just had too many weird experiences. I got shrooms in my bag. You want to yeah, do it tonight before we do stand-up? not doing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> the shrooms before stand-up would seem pretty gnarly to me. After stand-up, nice release. Yeah. Are you the, gonna do them tonight? Yeah. No, but last time we did our show at the Improv, I was on mushrooms. It was fun. The, okay. The older I get, the more I, I like. I, I just need to be in control more. I, like I, I, I yeah, used to just be I like, feel. oh, I'm gonna get blacked out. It's gonna be, all, but I, I just, 
I, I, I don't know. We I'm got responsibility. I'm getting more prudish about a lot of things. Oh, What's like, that movie? Sounds hurtful. Yeah. Something Borrowed, the one with Jim, well, like where everyone's a bad person in it. What's that? John name? Krasinski yeah. and uh, Jennifer Goodwin and Kate Hudson. Yeah, yeah, Something Borrowed. It's not a fun movie. I'm like, I don't like any of these people. Yeah. No, they're, they're all kind everyone of shitty cheats. Else. Yeah. Oh, yeah. None of the characters are likable. I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. That's why you didn't like Maverick, the Mel Gibson movie. No, I love that movie. Oh, when I was when I first watched it, I didn't like it. But it's now, a good movie. It's a good movie. It's a great movie. So fun. A lot of charm. Yeah. Now it's so good. But yeah, at first I was like kind of Because they all lie, right? Yeah. I didn't yeah. like that. And his dad's a liar. I'm like, everyone's a liar. <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> everyone's a liar. Poker, they're all lying. Everything's lying. Can't we just get some World War II veterans and just get a mission? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I uh I had a funny thing yesterday. My, I guess my GF, she has a good friend who is good friends with my ex. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Dude, gnarly. And I, I never pried, but I was like, she was like, yeah, he told me a, before we went on our first date, he said he knew about you and that your ex had told him about you. Mm. And I was like, oh, did she speak well of me? And she, and she was like, no. No, really? Oh, no. She said, and I was like, what? I was like, really? Yeah. I was like, what'd she say? What'd she say? And then uh, she goes, she said you were a uh, toxic, manipulative narcissist. And I go, oh, okay, nothing too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally like, what? I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, literally, I was like worried yeah. it would be something else. And those are all bad things. But for whatever reason, I was like, ah, that's fine. Well, it didn't yeah, seem to I, bother her, so that's good. Yeah, he posted yeah. that story. And I was like, I was like, where did this come from? Yeah, I guess. Because he, he posted like a poll of like, What's the? What is oh it? yeah, I posted a poll on Instagram. Do you consider yourself a toxic narcissist? Yeah. <laughs> but all the people who said yes, I'm mm -hmm. like, you're probably not because yeah. you're yeah. aware. Well, I also I think we're quick. Those are like all the go-to words now to describe people. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think I am super narcissistic to a degree, but not yeah. like completely. Like yeah. there's percentages to things, and there's days where you're like more narcissistic, less narcissistic, and then there's dynamics where you're more narcissistic, less narcissistic. I, I don't yeah. think. People are, it, I don't think it's all encompassing. I think people yeah. have dimensions within those things. Yeah. So I, I think, it, yeah, I think it's like a, I th for me, I think, yeah, certain aspects where it, there is narcissism, it, it's, it just varies. Yeah. And there's like, right. there's like, it's like in your friendships and your relationships and yeah. your career. There's yeah, yeah. different ways to totally for that stuff to come out. That's yeah. also tough. That's cool that she told you that. And, also, it's you're getting a review from someone where things didn't work. Relationships are two-way streets. Dude, that's what I said. I go, it's I, like, come on, dude. Like, and it's also you want like you're getting one side of the story. You're a great guy. You're the man. No, no, but I was pretty shitty too, especially well, towards the, the end. Of course, that's like, the end. But and I well, I told her that too. I was like, well, does that sound I, I, when I described our relationship to her? I think I described it that way without using those words. But it was funny when I was walking away. She's like, that doesn't bother you. I was like, no, it just sounds like she liked me a lot. <laughs> 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 and I was more worried that she would have said that I was. Not talented, lazy, or bad at sex. That's <laughs> bad. Yeah, that, is, yeah, that would suck. But bad those, at sex. But that those are sucks. all narcissistic things to be worried about, that too. Is, like, I just, that is hilarious. Dude. Yeah, yes. I just want her to think I'm talented and good at sex. <laughs> well, maybe yeah. narcissistic. Maybe. Oh, no, I couldn't. JT, no. uh, he cooked bad steak and didn't dance well. What the fuck did she say? What did she say? What the fuck did she say? Well, more. narcissistic, maybe she means you were selfish in bed. Maybe she means that. That's Whoa. not true, dude. It's not no, true. I, I had my bone. Because I did have, because there was a thing, there was a certain thing I like to do, like a preamble to sex. And I did ask her one time, I was like, do I do that too much? And she was like, yeah, probably. Mm, but that was just no. what got me but going. look, you like to just put a leather jacket on and have a cigarette. <laughs> That's your preamble. Yeah. You like to sit in your smoking chair. Yeah. And then get after it. Mm. No, I, don't, I actually preamble. don't think. I'm, sincerely, I don't think I'm a selfish lover. I don't think. No, so. I I wouldn't think so either. Are you a selfish lover? No. With that hog, there's no chance. Yeah, I by mean, nature of you putting it in someone, you're being yeah, altruistic, it's benevolent. It's yes. true. You're not a selfish lover. No, no, no. I'll finesse bottom, and I like to dart. Yeah, the <laughs> dark. Uh, I hate coming. Here. I don't even come, dude. Sometimes I, I can't. Go, you, I just go in my closet. Considerate person. I I I I eat the butt every time. I love nice. that about you. That's nice. That's I'm great. Like, I'm like, wait a second. After the deed is done, I'll be like, wait a second. Did we forget something? Yeah. Don't yeah, exactly. Forget. You're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Make Let me sure, go through my checklist yeah, you, you, real quick. Make sure wait, you have dessert. Load, wait, load, check. Yeah. <laughs> Before we uh, watch Emily in Paris. <laughs> yeah, make sure, let's you have go, your, uh, make sure you have your I'm just, coffee. I'm just laying there. Wait a yeah. second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I'm not doing because I but I also have a little bit of like a, um, 
I've never been one of those guys. I, I think there's guys who are like very kind of like um, assertive in the in the sack or whatever. I don't think I've ever been that kind of. You're more like go with the flowy. Go with the flowy, yeah. Yeah, I used to have this. Um, there's a roommate that I had really brief time. JT and I lived together in first in LA, but I had a really brief time with this roommate, and um, all he had, and I moved, I moved in with him, and he just had a mattress sideways in the middle of the room, like in the middle of the shared space, a fish tank, and a boxing bag. Mm-hmm. And so he'd bone his girlfriend just right there. And like, he's like, oh yeah, dude, you can just go sleep in the bedroom. And that's where I slept. And yeah, he was only doggy style. Like, that's wait, 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 was. this is where you'd sleep? <laughs> he would bone her out there? Yeah, yeah, he would bone in the living room. He just like, that was his style. He's like, dude, and he'd like, and he had a ton of beta fish. He's like, dude, after the fish fight tonight, you go to your room and I'm going to fuck doggy style. Whoa. And you know, that relationship didn't work out because here's the thing like dude I'd, I'd put on you know i'd listen to good podcasts i'd listen to fucking moby at the time i was listening to a lot of lcd right. sound system dude, hell yeah. and you know the album would end and he'd still just be going doggy style right greedy i don't like doggy style yeah. you know i like it's okay to just go through but i like positions where you feel like you might make a baby at the end of it. <laughs> oh i like that <laughs> yeah like i'm always in my primal brain sex is most horny when it feels like it could end in a kid. That's so amazing. that's why I'm like big on Mish. Right. Because you're like super in there and you're like digging in and you're like, all right, when this comes out, you know, I'm wearing a bag, but I'm like, there could be a baby. Right. Yeah. It's just in that. And mode. that's even my, like legit, my dirty talk is like, I want to fucking put a baby in you. Right. That's awesome. Well, you say yes. that. Yeah. Strider, would there ever be moments when you were like yeah. super hungry and you'd be like. I say it all the time. You'd have to like go to the kitchen make a pbj and they'd just be doing it doggy style 100 percent, dude he'd ask me to feed the fish too he's like hey when you're done making that pb and j can you just throw some fish food for the so he had tons of endurance and he would just keep going yeah and, yeah and so he'd basically go all day and you'd be like cleaning the place yeah this I, poor gal she's just getting like dude yeah she'd be like hey can we mix it up and he'd be like in a little bit <laughs> what was he looking at <laughs> dude he was looking at his bo- his punching bag He'd be even punching his punching <laughs> He'd be back. staring oh, at his pretty, punching bag well, the whole time he was that's having sex. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's badass, yeah. This guy was pretty gnarly. And they got along for a while. She was into it for a while, but then I think she grew out of it. They only did it for like a week. Oh, wait, and he was a preschool teacher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. He worked with kids, yeah. And he wore sunglasses indoors, His name right? was Mr. Braden. He'd wear sunglasses during it? Oh, yeah. He had fucking full-on shades because there was like such a leaves? big, there was such a powerful UV light. Yeah. The whole place was UV light. It was day, it was fucking high noon around the clock in our apartment. And you called him Mr. Braden? You didn't know his first name or I mean, anything? Yeah, you made me call him Mr. Braden. That's what it said on his Craigslist ad. So I don't really know what his first name was. That's crazy. Yeah, Mr. Braden. Did you ever just call him Mr. Whoa. or was it always Mr. Braden? I fucked up one time, Mr. Braden, and then he said, hey, stand next to the punching bag. Can you hold it for me? And he acted like he slipped, but socked me super hard in the shoulder. Whoa. So, but I caught on to that. He caught, socked me so hard. Yeah, Canelo style. Work the arms first. Make him useless by the later mm-hmm. rounds. Yeah, he just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember one time, because you had a landline at that time. So one time yeah, I came had in a and landline. he was boning and he's like, hey, you got like a couple voicemails. I think you have like a family emergency. <laughs> yeah. Still boning? Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. He's like, it was crazy, dude. He's like, dude, your grandma really wants to see you. Like she's reading the will. And he's like, no, nah, I can't make it just. That's okay. And he had one of those out loud answer machines. I missed this. They were out loud. Just yeah. You could hear the machine. What was his just ball slap? What was cheeks. his answering machine message? Oh, his answering machine yeah. was he would just go, uh, you know, like the rally monkey for the Angels games? He'd go, ooh, rah! <laughs> and then just a message. Beep? Yeah, yeah. Beep. Beep. <laughs> ooh, wah! Wait, I, beep. I- I heard he would do like impressions while he was <laughs> fucking too. That's like the, that's, the that's the like down monkey? with that's like the yeah, beginning of down Angels with the games, sickness. They do that noise. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, wah! Disturb. Yeah. yeah, I'm probably Ooh, doing a bad wah! rendition of it. Yeah, it's called down with the sickness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, that's crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That we only lived together for like a month. Then he um, so he, he choked up. me out, and so I had to move out. <laughs> oh fuck! Yeah, he choked me out while well, he was boning, right? Yeah, I made his dino nuggets from Trader Joe's. I fucking was super hungry. I fucking was like, "Don't grill up these dino nuggets." I don't give a fuck, dude. And I brought some fresh ranch at that time, just living the single life. And um, Trent and- Downs choked me out one time just because he said he literally said he was doing it to me as a favor so I could see what it felt like. Oh, that's the worst. That type of guy, that's dude. A good favor. And he just choked me out in the hallway at school one time. And I had to act like it was cool afterwards. But, hey, Trent, thanks, dude. Dude, thanks. Yeah, thanks for teaching me that knowledge. So now I'll know when I'm getting. Why did you out. say I want to know what it feels like to get knocked out? No, I'm kind of reluctant to talk out. about it because I don't want kids to try it. But there was a thing where like people used to choke themselves to get a high. Oh yeah, um, don't like do that. Like the oxygen deprivation would give them a high, and I was just asking him about it before school one day. Yeah, and then he he found me in between periods and choked me out. He's like, "That's what it feels like." 
And I was like, oh, thanks, dude. Appreciate that. But it, how did that feel? At, at my high, Horrendous. At my high school, they, they would put kids in sleeper holds a lot. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, sleepers. And this kid, Donnie, you know, he just came up behind me, tried to put me in a sleeper hold, but I spazzed out so hard. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he's, like, and he's like, let me go. He's like, fine. I won't, I won't sleep. Put you to sleep. That's good. You reacted well. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just so, I was like, I was, it was kind of embarrassing because the whole like. Yeah, you flailed. The whole common area was like, like it was in like this sort of hangout area for the boarding school. And I was like, oh, oh. And he's like, it was like uncool of me. He yeah, was like, not get choked like, out. Yeah, yeah. He was even more chill. But he was like yeah. going for it, like dude. Yeah, because I've done like fake wrestling moves with people, like sleepers and everything. But we're always joking around. I'm not actually trying to put somebody to sleep. No, they. Would what do are you guys yeah. crazy? That's what yeah. happens when you you know put kids in a boarding school. Yeah, I guess. I was so. going to say too. Like I can't even imagine what it must have been like to be in an all boys school. Yeah, because one it was of the co-ed. only. I did. Oh, it was co-ed. You had yeah. girls in Mine, the hallways too. I did all oh, boys. that's different. I that's did different. all boys. Not yeah. in the dorms though. We weren't allowed to go in their dorms. You right. were at an all boys school. Yeah, my my Whoa. high school was all boys Catholic. Yeah, that's a bummer, dude. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. So would you guys like fart in front of each other? Yeah, yeah. You got to let those go. There's no reason to hold them back. Man, so great. Yeah, there were teachers that would have like spray. They would spray the classroom like with air oh, freshener. Man. <laughs> no, they yeah, they would. Guys yeah. would fart. That's what I imagine. Because like the girls are a good buffer for our like worse impulses. Behavior, you know? yeah. Yeah. Like because if you act like too much of a dingbat, girls like you're gross, and then you're like, All right, I'm not going to behave like yeah. that. Yeah, there was no reason to be hygienic. Yeah, so you guys are just farting in front of each other. Yeah, would you guys have farting. like boners in class and like point at them and be like, dude, I got a boner. <laughs> No, we wouldn't we didn't do that. I wasn't getting boners. Don't don't they say I not anymore for me, but like don't they say like if you're like a healthy man, you're supposed to get like five boners a day? Really? Yeah. Whoa. Wait, let me yeah, but at what age? Whoops. <laughs> oh fuck. Um like just automatic boners or give yourself. I mean, it depends boners. what you're doing. If you're working all day and you're like around people, you're not getting boners. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like 30 year olds. Dude, this is boners. crazy. Yeah. Online doctor. Lloyd's pharmacy. How many times does a man get erect in a day? The average man has 11 erections each day. What? As many. Where are these dudes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that can't be right. What? Dude. Yeah, there's no way. 11 how are you supposed to do your job it's a, you know what it's a pharmacy thing i think they're trying to peddle dick dick yeah. drugs yeah yeah 11 boners a day no no way healthline.com people with penises have 11 boners a day maybe you get them while you sleep yeah three to five when you're sleep. i don't get that many when i'm sleeping Dude, I've been, I've been. Oh yeah, maybe. this is concerning because I've been, I've been sunning them, I've been ice bathing them. I've been, you know, well, watching you're... Independence Day and visualizing boning the alien. You're getting yeah. boners in the ice bath. If yeah. you get a boner in the ice bath, that's a powerful dude. How can you do that? That's, that's like a sounds like it's a, a battle, like an oxymoron yeah. or something. That's amazing, dude. Yeah, I just focus and I just sort of like, I just sort of think of like, you know. Hot mature tits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I like to cry. I bet if I you can get it in the ice bath, I bet it's a r- really rock hard. Yeah. I mean, it's like. Because then it's really like an, like an icicle. It's exactly it. Yeah. It's a popsicle. Yeah. Is that if you dink it, will it like break like the T100 and, and, that's the and danger. Terminator 2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Dude, you just danger. sounded like Robert De Niro and he. You're like, that's, the, that's, the, discipline. <laughs> that's the discipline. That's the discipline. <laughs> that's the danger. Yeah. Um, Dude, should we answer some cues? Yeah. Down. Stokers, I'm interrupting this dang Four Horsemen podcast. Let you know once again that we got our show coming out August 23rd on Netflix. Chad JT, go deep. Add it to your list right now so you can watch a day of. Get the notification. What up? And uh, we are on tour. We're hitting dates all over America. We're going to keep adding dates. Keep your eyes peeled, but we're coming for the East Coast. We're coming in hot for you, East Coast. What up? And some Midwest. I'm talking Chicago. Ooh, ooh. We also added a, a second Chicago show. So we had a late show. So get your tickets at chanjt.com. Um, and also we're brought to you by the legends at Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pube, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dinks are looking fresh and clean. Because if you got pubes poking out of your underwear, 
If you got a bush coming out over your dink, messing with the size of your hog, if you just got pubes and you want to give them the trim that they're looking for, <laughs> check out Manscaped, guys. This is the premium all-in-one company if you want to get your body looking tight, smelling good, and fresh with pubes and all just types of body hair, pristine, because you can get the platinum package, which has everything. You know, they got the lawnmower 4.0, the body wash, the two-in-one shampoo, the weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer. They got ball spray toner, anti-chafing boxers, the shed travel bag, all that good stuff. And all the, I mean, there's 6 million dudes worldwide who trust Manscaped. So by going to manscaped.com, you can get 20% off with free shipping with the code go deep. You know, get on the train, guys. Get that Manscaped stuff all over your pubes because it's the best. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code go deep at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code go deep. Use the platinum package because the gold standard is no longer good enough. We're also brought to you by Legends of Athletic Greens. What up, Athletic Greens? Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the podcast. Guys, this is my favorite all-in-one new Trish package. Our next partner, it, it, that's something from the script, but I, I'm just going off script because I love them so much because this is a product I literally use every day. I take Athletic Greens every morning. It's my easiest way. I mean, you got to get all your vitamins in you. And how do you do that? With just one scoop of this athletic green and it tastes delicious and it's just like you get everything in one scoop you get vitamin d you get vitamin a you got vitamin you know zj all the stuff in there because you get 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help start your day right and contains less than one gram of sugar and you can uh it's keto paleo vegan dairy free and gluten free so what up? It's the best of the best. Guys, I highly recommend Athletic Greens. Get your nutrition on point with Athletic Greens. It's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash go deep. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash go deep to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. What up, dude? Crap. <laughs> And we're also brought to you by Legends at ShipStation. What up, guys? ShipStation is absolutely legit. If you're running a business, if you just are trying to ship stuff and make it easy, if you're trying to ship in mass, especially, and make it easy, use ShipStation because shipping is annoying. It's frustrating. It can be hard. It's pricey. And they make it easy for you. It gives e-commerce sellers an easier way to manage shipping. You can take all that energy that goes into managing orders, choosing carriers and printing labels and use it to grow your business. ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 sellers. 100,000 sellers, guys. And uh, it's super easy. They work with all your storefronts, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, and you can get deeply discounted shipping rates. And you can compare carriers, rates, delivery times. It's all good stuff. Highly recommend ShipStation. I use them for merch and they were absolutely legit. So I recommend you use them too. ShipStation is not magic, but it will make your shipping stress disappear. Sign up using promo code GODEEP for a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com and start breathing easier with every shipment. That's two whole months of stress-free shipping and it's free to try. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, type in GODEEP, ShipStation, make ship happen. All right, let's get back to the show. It's a competition between two bros to see who can stay single the longest dumb. What is the plot from the movie Tomcat? So. Yep, and also Wedding Crashers oh, a little bit. Yeah. Mm. It's a good script idea. Uh, It depends how old you are. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to do it now. Yeah, if you're 18, <laughs> if you're 18, you know, I almost think it has the reverse effect too. Like if you're like two bros and you're like, who's going to stay single the longest, it'll actually maybe 
power up your desire to not be single. Yeah, that might really. manifest. Yeah, it's yeah. actually a good idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. that. That's what I was thinking. Is like you won't have any sort of desperation. Yeah, people will like your resistance. You'll yeah. be like, actually, I'm trying to stay single, and yeah. then they're like, really? Why? Yeah. And then you're like, oh, you know, it's important to me. Yeah, and it'd be cool. You know, it'd be cool if one of the guys came in one day and he's like, he's like, dude, I'm out. He's like, he's like, I can't do it. It's this love, you know. Yeah, it's kind of fun yeah. to lose when the consequences of lo losing yeah. are that you're in yeah. love with someone. And and too, if you like, if if you, it, yeah, it could it could sort of weed out any sort of, you know, because sometimes people might sort of force themselves into relationships. Right, just so they can't be single. You're not going to settle if there's competition. There's no settling online. happening. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually kind of really brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's just your approach. Because, I mean, you could really stay single if you're like, I live at my mom's house and I own a sword. I don't know if like <laughs> ladies are really going to like that. Right. But you also might find a lady who really does. You know what I mean? But odds right. are, hey, what's up? I'm 42. I like uh, to just wield my sword around, not for exercise, but just to feel its energy. Um, you're going to stay single for a while, dude. Nice. Dude. What sword is more concerning, if it's a broad sword or a samurai sword? I think samurai. Actually, no, broad, broad. Because samurai can be decorative, I feel like. Yeah, right. It's a little oh, yeah. more elegant. Yeah. If you're rocking a broad sword, you're like, dude, relax. Yeah, you're like, well, you're, I mean, I guess you can get away with the excuse, like, it's William Wallace's. But, like, if you'd, like, just have a broad sword, it's like, I went to Knott's Berry Farm and I couldn't not have it. Yeah, it's very love on the spectrum. Yeah. So, I guess you got to just be, watch your approach. And then on the other side of that is, if this competition is coming from a place of, oh man, can we just churn through ladies? I also don't think that's the nicest thing. Maybe this is just me getting soft to my older age, but you know, if you're also a young guy and the ladies want to just bone too and have fun, cool. But just make sure you don't, you know. Well, what I like about it is that people. they're not framing it as like a who can bang more in a year. It yes. doesn't feel like the. That's says, good, but I worry about that. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. feel as built in, but that is the concern. But no, I think this is cool. Because I think it'll have the opposite effect, yeah. And you'll be more discerning in your in your partners. Um. It, okay. Uh, my friend always comes around me and my girlfriend at lunchtime, and he's one mad awkward dude. How can make the situation with him so awkward that he bails? How do I out awkward him, Frankie Deal? Nice name. First off, what what's a? My friend comes around me and my girlfriend at lunchtime, and he's one mad awkward dude. Mm. How can make the situation with him so awkward that he bails? How do I out awkward him? Uh, well, your buddy, the guy who does doggy style in the living room, that seemed like a pretty good solution. Yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. I would like I would bring like a, a fish with you to lunch, like a live fish, not intended for eating, and be like, hey man, this is we're just gonna hang out with my fish. We're just kind of doing that, and he'll be like, uh, I like to look at fish too. Oh really? You do? I never knew that. Mm -hmm. uh, Come here, dude. Let me punch you. <laughs> that will work yeah yeah you can ask him like really personal questions too yeah yeah start yeah make him feel like comfortable cool. hey man what's your biggest failure in life and then if he's down and he answers sounds pretty cool i'd let him hang yeah that's pretty vulnerable and that's like ability baby so i think you you know look we all know where this is going you got to have an honest conversation with the dude and be like hey man i just want to have lunch with my lady today why why are you third wheeling you know, you don't need to attack him like that, but be like, dude, you're kind of third wheeling. Like, I like you, bro, but, you know, I, if if you see me and, and my dank ass GF here, it's kind of date time for our lunch, you know? Maybe make out with your girlfriend a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. Start and then if he's into in that, him, yeah. he sounds pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to test how awkward he really is by, yeah, you got the right idea being awkward with him. Oh, this is Dear Chad and JT. I'm just going to get to the point. I'm a recently divorced, attractive blonde and looking to have a lot of fun that I've missed out on in the last 20 years. Can send pick if you would like. Jack, thanks for picking this one. <laughs> Jack, where to write this thing? <laughs> wait, this sounds like, wait, this sounds <laughs> like the- you really believable, this? dude. Wait, Did you write this wait one? keep going. This sounds like uh, the, my, the emailer that I get. Does she go by Donna? She goes by that? Yeah. That's Whoa, the email yeah, you get is on there? That's her, yeah. Oh, no this way. <laughs> this is for sure a dude, but we'll pretend it's a chick. <laughs> <laughs> so we feel cool. Yeah, women cool. don't listen to my show. Yeah, this is a dude, dude. My youngest son, Barry, <laughs> is it, does that check out? I think so. Who's your biggest fan? I listen to your show every week and we can't get enough. 
I'm especially infatuated with your cute smile, Chad, <laughs> and your masculine physique, JT. Getting to the point, my question is, would either or both of you ever consider dating a woman more mature than you, either as a fling or as a serious relationship? Sorry if I'm coming on too strong. I know this is a family-friendly show and don't want to offend, but I really feel connected to you guys, or as I like to call it, your squad. By the way, we already have tickets to your show in Charlotte in a couple months. <laughs> Maybe we set up a meet and greet with my son after the show. Then I show both of you some Southern, Southern hospitality. Don't worry. I don't bite JK. Yours truly Donna. Um, no, read the parentheses. Please. Oh shit. Please call me Elizabeth. So my son doesn't catch on. <laughs> dude. That's, that's funny. dude. That's, that's why Joe was being cryptic, pointing. I'm like, dude, yeah. how do you not know? Just say it. Okay, that's, that makes sense. Yeah, that's the same woman. That's awesome. Um, I love that. I mean, we're not exactly a family friendly show. We in, talk about Joe's the penis is, nonstop. <laughs> and the answer is yes. I would consider dating a older woman as a fling, or as a serious relationship. Not, not a serious relationship because I want to have children. You could be a stepdad. So, yeah, and how old are we talking? I mean. She can have kids up to, I mean, you know, there's more risk. No, I, like, I, I mean, I'm can 38, you, like, so I'm thinking like, like an 80 year old, 45 to 50 Whoa. range. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, me and gotcha. Chad are both, uh, both take in committed relationships. Yeah. yeah, I love my girlfriend, she's the best. Me too. That's fucking rad, dude. Yeah, GF bros. But, I'll, <laughs> but if any other guys want to write emails like this. They make me feel good, and I'll read them. Yeah, dudes, keep them coming, man. That's dudes. pretty rad. Hey, fellas, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you know what? Uh, we did that show, Culture Court. Great show by Matt Lockwood yeah. and Keith Johnson. Well, actually, we didn't do it. We yeah. were like supposed to like headline it, which was a great honor. Yeah. And then when they brought us up, the show was running over, and the manager of the comedy store came up and said, show's over. Yeah. And we'd literally been up there for like three seconds, and they booted all me, Strider, and Chad off the stage, which was hilarious. But one of the prior, so what they do at the show is, is they, they have two comedians go against two other comedians and they debate a topic and it's like court. But, uh, one of the things was that one of the guys works for OnlyFans, and he's a, uh, Oh, that's right. He's the messenger for like a bunch of, uh, hot chicks on there who yeah. put out like nudes and he's the one solely responsible for all the DMing. So the, yes. the case was about like, is that okay that he does that and tricks these dudes? And uh, that was really startling because he was showing me how he does it. And so he literally has to like adopt a seductive female persona and be like, hey, sweetie, you want another photo for today? You've been so cute all day. I feel like you deserve it. And he's just writing that shit to to dudes all day long. And the dudes are like, oh, this hot chick's messaging me. But it's, it's not. But it's, it's not even the chick? No, it's a dude. Oh, okay. So I thought he's like getting a cut from... Like the the hot chick that they are, they're paying well, them. Yeah, oh, they are okay. Oh, yeah, but it's like an administrative yeah. role. But the, none of those messages. Are but the the, the woman's real, but it's not. The messages aren't from her. No, the banter back and forth. That's, is that's just a like, good job. Is like he looks like us. I feel like that job. should be like it's kind of a bummer that like that you know isn't actually from the lady for the guy for the consumer. But like <clears throat> you got to figure that's what's going on. Like yeah. come on. Yeah, it's a business, bro. Especially like, if it's yeah. like a really famous. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's no way this is. She's just taking the time. Do you know how many yeah, messages she's getting a day? Yeah. She, there's probably like four of those guys on the payroll. Yeah. Like, come on. And then also, like, it is weird for him to get into that mindset, but like, he knows what guys want. And do you think he wrote a sample? That's interesting. Probably. Like applied. Yeah. You know, writing right. packet. Show me what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, here's some prompts. And it's like, yeah, describe. All right, here's one. Brosefiages of the highest order. Sorry, I burped. I had a couple of beers. All right, the title of the email is Roommate Friend I Think I Love Her? Question mark. I'm a 29-year-old dude, and I currently live with an absolute babe in my apartment. She's one of those people I never want to lose from my life. And recently, I've developed feelings for her in a major way. She's also been throwing flirty vibes my way, but I'm having an issue in deciphering whether they have romantic intentions or if she's just being a good friend. For instance, she brought she bought me a really nice birthday gift and posted an on her IG story about me. When I mentioned getting a haircut, she immediately asked if she could cut it. 
We have Whoa. long talks about love languages and cute stories about how people in our lives have met. We are always texting throughout the day as well. I keep waking up after having steamy dreams about her and it's all consuming at this point. How do I let her know that I am interested in being more than friends without jeopardizing my living situation or an already solid friendship? Do I tell her or wait to see if she makes it super obvious? All my bros are split on whether or not I continue to play it cool or shoot my shot. Whoa. Dude, I say be like, hey, tomorrow night, let's like watch the bear on Hulu. Like, yeah. let's binge it. And then uh we'll 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 order or cook up some fun, fancy meals that are on like the edge of our abilities. And I'll buy a couple of bottles of wine. Maybe. And then you you get loose, you get hammered. Not too hammered, obviously. And then you just turn to her and you go for the smooch. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, because if it's at the point where it's like it's all the way it's the steam's all the way up. It, it's it's boiling. What is it? And What's food, the, food, the yeah. lid is about to burst off. The yeah, pot. you yeah. got. Then you got to go for it. You got to do yeah. something. And I think that's a great idea. Instead of just good verbally advice. saying it, I think make an well, experience, like making it obvious without actually saying it, and then just kind of letting it happen naturally. I think that's a brilliant idea. What you said and food is sensual. Yeah. Like when I was watching the bear, I was like, I get why all these girls are attracted to lead in it because it's like. It's hot watching someone make food. 100%. You know what I mean? He's like doing a reduction on the sauce and it's like, I don't know, it's all just like steaming and 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 seductive and then like, yeah, make like do like a pork belly thing. And doing something as a team's great. Even like Hello Fresh meals with my dang fiance is fun. We put on a little music. That's great advice. I would say then go a step further. Baby, hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's great, but if it doesn't work out, you're moving out. <laughs> That's what I'm, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, like yeah. That. So be ready for that. Uh, yeah, I'd say maybe you know? yeah, towards the, the end thing. of your lease. Yeah, yeah. Do it towards the end of the month yeah. or, or or maybe at the beginning of the month so then you have yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, bro, do this. Bro, we're almost at the end of July, August 1st, baby. That's what you're doing. I think it's a Monday. <laughs> a little bit weird, but okay. Fine. Do it on Sunday night. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. She, if she, 31st. If she, if she rebuffs you, you could be like. Well, good thing we're month to month because daddy's out of here next year. Oh, 100%, or, or you bro. Go the other way. You go, you're like, all right, look, I'm in love with you. I want to be with you. She's like, nah. You're like, all right, well, I'm going to be here for the next six months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, have fun dealing with that, that yeah. eyesore. Yeah. But, I, dude, I don't know. I don't, I, I think broadly, like when, when you're into someone, it's better to get to the end of that situation faster and just figure out if they're into you because then like if you're kind of just accepting less than what you want i think it's like death over like a, a thousand days like just get there yeah just figure yeah. it out yeah. yeah baby um all right uh, last question ahoy there captains of stoke i have adhd i come from a repressed religious family and I feel like I've been hiding myself from people for the longest time until recently I've started to be more open with people and with what I'm I've become more close with a girl at work. We've both known for a year about the crushes we have on each other. She's bipolar, so we both somewhat know what it's like to be neurodivergent. We both deal with emotional dysregulation in varying degrees, and we both somewhat struggle with loneliness. The thing is, she's 17, almost 18, and I just turned 24. I'm aware of the stigma. You know what, dude? Um, there's a lot more here. I think you just got to keep it moving. Yeah, yeah just keep it moving, brother. You'll yeah. find somebody else. Sorry, dog. Yeah. That was a fun question to end on. Um, <laughs> um, all right, dude, Chad. What's your beef of the week, bro? Uh, my beef of the week is Derek, who lounges on the turf at Equinox. Oh. Um, so on the turf at my gym, uh, there <laughs> are battle ropes. You know, There's like a little bit of turf, and there's a sled, and there's battle ropes right there. And this one dude, Derek, just lounges there all day. So, you know, I'll be gearing up, ready to, to, to you know, battle some rope. Just take him and do some cool moves, you know, just sort of make my presence known, dominate the turf. But he's lounging there on his phone. And then occasionally he'll get up and do like a kettlebell swing. And I'll be like, dude, you don't even have to be on the turf for this. And he'll just, every time I go there, it's just Derek, you know, and I'm in, He's like, hey, what's up, dude? And I'm like, yeah, what's up, Derek? Like, find another place to swing your K-bell, dude. You know, because daddy's trying to rope. And on top of that, they just put in new battle ropes that are longer, so it takes up more space. So 
oftentimes I'm not able to, to B rope and it's able, you know, it's kind of inhibiting my ability to get my arms as toned as I'd prefer. And, you know, <laughs> that's not something you want in this world. You know, when you have the ability to have the tone that you desire and, but you know, some douche is just sitting there on Twitter, not letting it happen. That's fucking messed up, dude. Thanks, dude. My beef of the week is with um, everyone giving Aaron Rodgers shit for showing up looking like Cameron Poe to training camp. I don't know if you guys saw this, but he showed up with long hair. Oh, I didn't beautiful. see it. In the white tank top with beautiful. the jeans. And he looked exactly like Cameron Poe. And I'm like, that's awesome, dude. That's the sickest thing I've ever seen. So why is this bad? I even mentioned this to JT. I was like, dude, you see this is pretty funny. And JT's like, you know, I do love the way Rodgers lives his life. He just gets after it. He's into aliens. He podcasts. He tells people to relax. Now, should he like, is the Green Bay Packers organization, organization going to suffer because of some of his antics in the offseason and, you know, saying, you know, whatever with the draft a year or two ago? Yeah, you know, he's a bit of a Madonna, but guess what? He slings the rock. And I love his new look. Yeah. I get fired up on a new look for for someone, especially a dude. And dudes don't often feel sexy. Yeah. So if he feels sexy like that, then go for it, dude. And yeah. Cameron Poe is a sexy look. Yeah. So was he trying to look like that? Was that or no, he I, just I don't even, wound up looking like that? That's a good question. I don't know if he knew That'd about be it. Cool if he did. But I think he might, because he's kind of a he's you know, he this guy knows what he's doing yeah. a little bit, you know. No, I yeah. think he does. Yeah. yeah. I also think when you're like super popular, it must just get boring to do the right thing all the time. And I think sometimes it's fun to mess up and just feel that too. It's like it's kind of connected to the billionaire uh yeah. uh like thought experiment we were working through. Like I think He's just like, hey, what if I just try to be this guy for a day and just see what happens? Exactly. Like they're kind of just having fun with, I don't know, making public choices and seeing what the room. Kyrie Irving's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Him and Aaron Rodgers should do a podcast together. Yeah. Weird on weird. Yeah, like weird on weird. Not much evidence, not much science behind it, but hey, we feel it. I would watch. I would listen. I'd be very curious. Yeah. Who's your beef of the week, Joe? Uh, my beef of the week is uh, with Bird scooter um Whoa. so Whoa. i well did you guys ever take a ride where okay my phone went out of battery during the ride oh yeah so i couldn't end the ride so i had to go up into my apartment wait for my phone to come back on it was like five more minutes and then i i saw like when it came back on that it the meter kept running the scooter's been parked for like at least five minutes now and the meter's still running and I emailed them and they said that they wouldn't give me uh, the money back because it was like five extra dollars than what it should have been. Oh, that's mm -hmm. whack that they wouldn't give you the and money. And they said, back. no, that's the, that that ride ended appropriately or whatever. It's like they got to take there, there should be once a, the scooters parked for a minute. It goes off. I mean, what are what are people doing? They're not hanging out for a minute on there turn it off yeah people's phones go out of battery how do they not take that into account S scammers yeah that's kind of whack yeah it's tell them it surprised me that as a guy who enjoys salt on a cucumber as a snack would have a low battery charge on his phone those seem counterintuitive dude yeah well it's a very yeah adult I, snack and, you know i gotta i gotta stay i gotta be better with charging at night it's always going out of battery. Dude, my, my beef of the week is somewhat connected to that. It's about transportation. I think as a species, culture, civilization, we should have better modes at this point. Mm. I'm trying to go to Nantucket next weekend. I have to take two flights. It's going to take me two days. And then we're going to Des Moines. It's taking you two days to get to Nantucket? Yeah, because I leave at 11. I get into Newark at 8. And then you have to take a plane from there to get to Nantucket. So it's two days of travel. Then it's going to take me two days to get to Des Moines mm. for a shoot we're doing. I'm like, it's fucking stupid, dude. Like, how do we just not have better things? <laughs> like, why are there not bullet trains everywhere that just do like a thousand? Yeah. Yeah. Why is there not like... I don't know. Like every time I'm in a plane, I'm like, is this really the best way we can do it? Yeah. I'm like, it feels a little bit 
I just don't know where we allocate all of our energy sometimes to in terms of improving things. And I think Transpo is one that could use a definite facelift. Yeah, dude. Big time. Who's the secretary of Transpo right now? Is it Buttigieg? Buttigieg. Dude, Pete. Get some bullet trains on there, dude. Yeah, let's go, bro. Bring back the freaking Concord. For real. Yeah. That I'd fly in the Concord. What really? was that again? It's like the super fast. Does the airplane. speed of sound. Only oh, commercial okay. plane that does the speed of sound. Yeah. Dude, bring back the Concord. They should all be Concords at this point. Well, they always yeah. have like those blueprints for those trains, but they never come to fruition. I know, right? Yeah. For like the, mo the models or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Newsome. And why does it? Why does it take me six hours to get to New York? <laughs> What's that mean? Dude? It's too long. It's fucking well, that's, long it's, as that's shit. a long distance. I mean, it would, like from Austin to here, it's only two and a half hours. But that's half I can, the country. I can deal with that. Yeah, but that's six a nice hours. Flight. Six is tough. We need that's faster. Why, that's planes. why I don't go to Europe. Oh, yeah, like, do you bro. want to go to Europe? I'm no. like, uh, how long am I on the plane for? Yeah, They're like, I'm like, like I, I can't sleep on a plane. I don't know what plane. people yeah. do that whole My time. My whole trip's yeah. gonna be fucked. Yeah, I don't care what I don't care what beignet I'm having over there, dude. It's not good enough for that flight. It's yeah. not worth it. Only way I'm going to Europe is if I can bring an air mattress and do doggy. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great call. Dude, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's a great call. Yeah, that's why private jets are cool. Yeah, but, but I only if want to do it if it's, I want other people to watch. I want right. to be on a commercial. Yeah, you're an exhibition. I want town square. Yeah. I heard that's what they do on Concord. They make you, you get to watch people fuck. You do doggy at the speed of sound. That's right, dude. Yeah. So like your moans are like, you know, let's say you're you're on your way to New York and you're like going over like, you know, Denver. Your moans are still in Nevada. Whoa. Yeah, I moan dude, loud. That's a good too. riddle, dude. <laughs> if you're on, if you're boning doggy on an air yeah. mattress on Concord. And one takes off from Florida and the other one takes off simultaneously from California and you cross over fucking Des Moines. <laughs> Whose moan are you hearing? Whoa. Des Moines. Like you know the sonic boom? Des Moines. Yeah. When, <laughs> when, you, when you do doggy on a Concord, the sonic boom is like. Chad, who's your baby of the week? Uh, my baby of the week is Cole Hauser. Uh, dude, that's sweet. The yeah, actor? Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. Dude, he's a beast. I mean, that's a great baby of the week, dude. Yeah, he's. A, I mean, I'm watching Yellowstone right now. He's a rip in Yellowstone. Just a, just a man's man. Real, just fucking. Let's go. He'll beat the fuck out of you, and he's he has you know assertive sex. Um, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I don't mean that in like a rapey way i get you yeah, 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 yeah. maybe edit that out no no that's fine because my good. intention is in like one of the first episodes he's banging against like a a dresser it's a character trope. yeah stand-up wow. sex always works yeah on he's, doing stand, he's doing he's yeah. doing stand-up sex we've talked like, about that yeah i was with my girlfriend i was like i was, was jerry Maguire. Yeah. so it's a romantic comedy yeah. starts off yeah. with that yeah, it's great yeah, dude, yeah. strawberries Come on. dude yeah yeah Kelly um, Preston. you klutz firing stand-up sex <laughs> in yellowstone he he stands up for the jimmy i think the drug addict and just a good guy, Rip. What up? And then, uh, you know, we got to mention Carter Verone, Too Fast, Too Furious. Excellent villain. He's in. Um, I just remembered in. Um, Goodwill. Uh, good. Yeah, Goodwill Hunting. And dude, Matt Damon said that he's such a cool guy. Yeah. That he actually going into most scenes would be like, "Hey, just like lose half my dialogue." Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was. Yeah. He was canceling his own dialogue. Yeah. Which like, no actor. No act yeah. Is he the third friend? Yeah, he's the curly haired one. He's like, when he gives him the car, he's like, it's a good car. It's a good car. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a great scene by him right there. He's awesome. He's like, it's a good car. It's a good car. Yeah. He's a dude. And I think he realized that that character wouldn't talk much. Totally. Like he was given yeah. real uh, faithful, like kind of representation of that kind of person. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. all buddies. They all came up together. It's really sweet. The it's dynamic so, is so the real between them. Dude, yeah. And uh, what are some lines from uh, Too Fast, Too Furious? Uh, it's just like it's it's like also like the amount of saliva in his mouth when he mouth talks. saliva he's always sweating he's like you better get this done you got to get yeah. this done for me yeah. yeah I'll cut you like a rat yeah he's like um <laughs> oh, fuck I can't remember any lines god damn it I should have prepped anyways Cole Hauser what well it's, we're doing four podcasts this week so I'm yeah I'm, I'm ripping from nowhere right now yeah yeah but I mean you but know that's if, a great one if yeah. you're an actor you know I I I hope casting directors are like all right we have a stand up sex scene. You know, who has good stand-up sex? And I hope they go for Strider. Thank you. I was going to say, but if they pick yeah, you number one pick. Dude, with how much you rehearse. Dude, yeah, yeah. You 
Oh, dude, yeah. I, I would crush that. You'd be like, dude, hey, can I come over to your house and pick you up like five times? Yeah. Oh, dude, I, would, I, would just, I would rail you. <laughs> yeah, you'd be rehearsing like a they'd be like, like, They'd be like, wow, you, you were really prepared. I'm like, yeah. and JT's in the corner. like, what's up, brother? Yeah, like, <laughs> sitting on an ice good, pack. <laughs> good take, brother. Yeah, dude, you nailed it. Yeah, bro. sitting on an ice pack. Yeah. You're on crutches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd rehearse the shit out of that. Uh, Strider, who's your baby of the week, dude? Dude, uh... I think my baby week's probably got to be my dank ass fiance, dude. Just, just for gripping and ripping and being an absolute beast, dude. Um, dude, she made these dank ass. I just wake up and smell something dank in the apartment, dude. She makes these protein pancakes, dude. Nice. Getting jacked while eating something tasty. That's <laughs> hey, you better believe my fucking day was stoked from there on out. Yeah, so let's go. Great. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was fired up on that. And, you know, once she does something sick like that, you know I'm doing the dishes. I'm like. Go ahead. Don't go on to whatever else you're going to do. Appreciate you starting my day like this. That's nice. Fucking rad, dude. Do you get like, do you feel good? Like when you're doing the dishes, you're like, hey, we're a team. Yes. That's I'm nice. happy to do it at that point. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. I like to contribute. Yeah, that's what it is, right? Yeah. Everyone does their part. Joe, what's your, who's your baby of the week? Uh, my baby of the week's got to be uh, my buddy Dan, who answered my Instagram uh, plea for help in finding a, new place to live and offered me a room at his house uh really coming through for me and it's great that when you put yourself out there and then people are willing to help and uh and uh, yeah it's awesome that dan's able to take me in and let me live at his house so that's pretty awesome that's, that's awesome. rad that's this is the dude yeah. that i met when we were at the irish place no, no, this is a different guy. Okay, okay. Uh, Chad, who's your uh, legend of the week? Uh, my legend of the week. Well, first off, I got a Carter Verone quote. Hey, you mm. pockets aren't empty. Roman, uh, played by Terry. Damn, I'll take my cutter back. Great quote. Well, that's by good, cutter, man. he means cigar cutter. But my babe of the week is Luke Grimes' flow and Yellowstone. Um, I think it's tremendous, just really inspiring. Good montana cowboy flow you know with the facial hair i'm every time i see it i'm like damn can't wait for my hair to grow back like that yeah i just want to give him a shout out strider who's your legend of the week? my legend is gus dude um just had jd on the history's dank podcast legend but gus shows up gave him a ride there posted up in the studio and he saw the assortment of beverages there and he's like i'll shotgun any of these just off the cuff and he did. He shotgunned a hazy IPA and then a, a tall boy sparkling water, which was really cool. That's it really sick. boosted the stoke. That's so, I mean, what a beast, dude. That's sick. Yeah. That's yeah. And and punctured the cans around electronics, a lot of electronics. And I asked him, and he goes, no, bro, I'll find that air bubble. Don't worry. They call me Tank. And I, see, I, I witnessed why. That's sick. Um, Joe, who's your legend of the week? Um, <clears throat> my legend of the week is uh, the four horsemen oh, dude. plus Aaron and Jack. Let's go. Um, this is where it all started for me as far as podcasting goes. And you better believe it's great to be back here doing this. So I love it. And I'll come back anytime. Uh, I'll, I'll do it every week. I'll fly in. You're always welcome, Joe. <laughs> we love you. Love you, Doug. Yeah, I love you guys. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Man. Yeah, I love you. Week is um, Rob Lowe. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a really cool guy. Actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> My legend of the week is Joe. Nice. Well, it's good. All right, that's cool. It's yeah. good to have you here, Doug. It's yeah, it's great to, to be here. It feels. Uh, well, I guess the million dollar question then is, and I don't want to pressure you, but are you moving back to LA? I, I mean, I, I don't know. You're on the fence, right? Because you were considering it. Yeah. I mean, I was also going through a pretty hard time when I was doing that. I don't know. I'm still just kind of, uh, I don't know. We got to, not yet, but you know, there's nothing you know, everything's on the table. I, you know, the world's very unpredictable. So I don't, 
uh, I don't say anything's permanent. I don't have anything set in stone. So we'll just we'll see how it goes. Dang. But or, it does feel great being here. I'll say that. I like that. I like the suspense. You. Well, I mean, it's the truth. I don't know. It's I'm not gonna say yes or I'm. Uh, you know, I don't know. Ever if I say no, I don't know. I don't know. It's fair. It's fair. We'll brother. see. If you move back. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Whoa, oh, nice. that's rad. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw those. Yeah, those look cool. Yeah, because I haven't uh, joined a team yet in Austin. So, but yeah, I do. Yeah, I do want to play again. Chad, who's your legend of the week? Uh, or what's your quote of the week? Sorry, my quote of the week is um, from Rip and Yellowstone. It's hard to measure almost because almost doesn't matter. I love that. This is a, I think is a paraphrase from Plato. And he says, beauty educates the soul. Oh, that's nice. Nice. So, Joe, what's your quote of the week? <laughs> beauty tea darts the soul. Quote of the week is, uh, going to be like a movie line. Yeah, of course. I was watching the big Lebowski again, which I tend to always watch on flights and, one of my favorite uh, lines is when uh, the dude's leaving the the Big Lebowski's house after he meets Bunny for the first time. And she's like, I'll best. suck your cock for $1,000. And Brant's walking him out. He's like, I'm just going to go find a cash machine. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. So. Chad, what's your quote of the week? Phrase of the week? Yeah, sorry. Phrase of the week. I'm all over. Um, my you. phrase of the week is... Uh, Let's bust tonight's load. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to say that in front of other people and just there be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> we're just so used to this just disgusting banter that we're like, mm. well, dude, that, this thing when we were doing when we were like editing the show, we had one Zoom meeting with like you know producers and. It was all about a dick joke, and Amazing. they're like, you know, this, you know, these producers are like, they're just like, uh, maybe, no, I think we should show the full thing, you know. Yeah. And stuff. we're like, I think we should, leave. you know, it's like, was this with the the tower one when we're being schmoles? That one, I think so. I can't remember specifically. Yeah, we're yeah. Did we leave? We left that in, right? Yeah, I think so. It was funny. It was yeah, really funny. and and in the meeting, I was like, I can't believe this is our job. It's, it's rad. The best. That is rad. <laughs> just, just Twelve dissecting. smart people arguing about it. Yeah, yeah, arguing about a dick joke. Colbert talks about that. He's like taking your silly very serious. Yeah, yeah. It's very mm -hmm. good. Strider. Uh, probably. Uh, ooh wah! <laughs> Dude, I might have the worst ooh wah uh, of all time. Ooh wah! I, I mean, yeah. I, I I have the gist bless of you. what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. bless you. Ooh wah! Yeah, that's pretty good. No, ooh, that's not bad. Ooh, it's better than what I could do. You try it. Wow, <laughs> that's not that was bad. Right, that was pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, I went, I went for it. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Thanks. Can you uh, hit it again? Yeah, can you hit it again? Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Dude, People the are gonna. Face you make is amazing. They're gonna make that into something. Joe, what's yeah, your face that we freaking after it? Uh, let's crush it tonight, boys. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, dude. Hollywood Let's improv. Go. And my phrase that we forget after it is ball with the ball to bang to bang boogie to sit up, jump to boogie, so jump, jump. No, what is it? Hold on. My phrase that we forgetting after it is ball with the ball to bang to bang boogie, boogie sit up, boogie sit up, jump to boogie. Well said. Yes. Thank you. That's a great, great one. All right. Four horsemen. <laughs> Let's go. Let's ride. Let's ride. Y'all, y'all, y'all. To the improv. Y'all, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, later, dudes. Later, Great dudes. Great stuff, guys.